All right, welcome back. So let's do this. I'm gonna grab my mind reading helmet here, put it on, uh, Doc Brown style, and I will guess or predict uh, that you're still not sold on the Composition API. And if that's the case, if that's you, you're right. So far in this series, I haven't shown you anything that really demonstrates the benefits. So far, it's mostly, well, here, here's another way to do the exact same thing. And in fact, you might even think to yourself, you know what, I like the Options API even more. It feels more structured than this kind of loose approach using the Composition API. So again, all of this is perfectly normal. We haven't really reviewed many benefits yet. So that's what I want to start doing or begin doing over the next few episodes. Let's begin by talking about code reuse. So here's my home component. Actually, we don't even need this. Let's get rid of that. And then temporarily, I'm going to switch back to the options API. Okay, so imagine here, uh, in response to something, we'll just use a button here. When you click on the button, we want to display some kind of flash message to the user. Okay, so I could say, when you click on me, call a method flash and we'll say it works. All right, so of course I need to create a method here called flash that accepts a message. And for now, I'm just going to do an alert. Switch to the browser, give it a try, and of course it works. Basic stuff at this point. Okay, but now I wanna do the exact same thing from a different page, maybe the about page. So we'll do that here. And you know what? I don't think we even need this class here. So let's keep it super simple. Okay, so we'll say it works on the about page. But of course, if we give it a try, that's not gonna work at all. And the reason is obvious. I don't have access to this method. It was defined in a totally different component over here. Okay, so now you think, well, I need to call flash. So let's go to the about page and I'm gonna paste in all of that code. And now it'll work. Yep. About page, home page, we're up and running. But yeah, clearly you can see this is not ideal. I don't want to copy and paste this every single time. I want to show a flash message on a new page. And then further, if we change it, there's an opportunity for these things to become out of sync. So for example, maybe we decide to switch to a tool called Sweet Alert. So I will pull that in through NPM, and then I will import it up here. I'll call it Swall. There we go. And then it's as simple as replacing alert with sweet alert. Okay, so now if we give it a try, we have our fancy new alert message. But yeah, way back on the home page, that's still using the traditional alert. So now things have become out of sync. And it's really easy to do that six months down the line when you've forgotten that you copied this from one page to another. All right, so let's see how to fix that. But first, real quick, if you're not familiar with sweet alert, you can always add a title, you could add a message, and even a uh, level, like success, or warning, or danger, or information, and that will determine uh, what kind of icon is displayed. So let's stick with success. So come back, let's go to about, give it a try, and yeah, that looks pretty good. But yeah, again, we, we had that big problem where everything is out of sync now. Okay, so a more legacy or traditional way that we would solve this in Vue 2 applications. And actually on that note, it still works in Vue 3. It's just a little frowned upon these days. Anyways, that technique is known as mixins. It's sort of like traits in PHP. So let's give it a try. I'm gonna add a new directory called mixins, and you can name this anything you want. I'm gonna go with flash. Okay, so when we are creating mixins, one nice thing is the object here will be identical to your view components. And whatever you have here will literally be mixed in with the component that pulls it in. So that means if I want a method, then I create one here. If I have a particular hook, then I would declare it here. And again, it all gets mixed up or merged into the single view component. Okay, so now you can see where I'm going with this. If I switch back, I could take, well, all of this and move it in here. And we'll return this. All right, we have our mix in. So now if I want to use it back in the about page, so import flash from, and we go into our mixins directory and flash. Now I can export an object and I will add this new mixins property 
where I can provide an array of mixins that should be, again, mixed in with the current component. Okay, so now I once again have access to this flash method because it was defined in the mixin here. So this should work exactly the way it did before, but now I can also pull it in from the home view. So let's do this. Import it like that, and then declare it as a mixin and reformat. Cool. So now I have a single place where we can define how a flash message or overlay is presented to the user. And we don't have to worry about them becoming out of sync. I don't have to worry about copying and pasting implementations. Uh, this is definitely a step up. But now, like I said, even though this is still supported, it's not being deprecated anytime soon, uh, it's somewhat frowned upon, mostly because now when you have all these mixins you're pulling in, uh, the code base becomes a little less clear. It's not clear where this flash message is defined. And again, we can figure it out here because we have 10 lines or so, but you can imagine a component that is 400 lines long, and then suddenly you're calling this method and you don't immediately know where it comes from. And worse, if you have multiple mixins being pulled in or you're using a library that's pulling in mixins, yeah, again, it, it becomes confusing to determine where this is being defined. Or if you're, if you're changing state, maybe you're changing some kind of message property, but you don't see message defined here, so you find yourself having to look into all of your mixins to see uh, where it's defined. And yeah, that's not dissimilar to traits in PHP. Now, granted, a good IDE can help you with this. So in fact, I think PHP Storm can figure out where this is defined. But yeah, you're not always going to be using that. And still, it's, it's a potential concern. So a more recommended approach is to reach for something known as composables. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's create a new directory here called composables. And I'll add a new file here. And the common convention is to name it use and then the thing it represents. So in our case, we are working with flash messages. I will call it use flash. And now I will export a function that has the same name as the file. Again, we're following conventions here. Okay, so let's do it. I'm gonna take everything we have here, and it looks like it's just a method called flash, and I will define it like so. I'll paste that in and then declare flash as a function. And do note when I pasted that in, it automatically pulls in the import as well. Okay, finally, I'm going to return whatever I want to expose to the outside world or whatever I want to share. In this case, it looks like I just want to share a method called flash or a function called flash. Now, what we have here is technically just a module. I'm calling it a composable, but if you think about it, we're not really leveraging the composition API. We're not managing any state. But nonetheless, we will get there. I'm trying to start with the simplest possible example. So this is a very basic composable in quotes. Okay, so now let's use it. I'm gonna go back to my home component. We're no longer using mixins, so I will replace this with use flash from composables use flash. Okay, so now in my setup method, and this is almost always where you will call your composables, I can trigger this method or function and think about it, that function is going to return to me an object with a key of flash. And that property is equal to a function that displays a sweet alert. All right, let's use it. So I will pull that out, flash. And now don't forget, when we create this setup method, whatever you return from it is exactly like what you would have defined in your data method. Whatever I return here is just like uh, what I would have returned from the data method. Okay. So I will return flash. Now I can use it in my template. Switch back to Chrome, we're on the home page, and it works, very cool. So yeah, this is an alternative to using mixins. And I think you'll find this is the more recommended approach these days. And don't forget, we can even clean this up further by using script setup. When we do this, just like before, I can take the contents of my setup method and graduate it to the top level like this. And just to prove it to you, of course, it still works. But yeah, now to my eyes, this becomes much more appealing. If I want to reuse code, I create a composable, I import it, and then I use it. Okay, so now 
in my About page, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Paste it in, and now I have access to a Flash function uh, within this page as well. Give it a try. It works here, and on the About page, it works as well. Okay, so now if I want to change the functionality, I can do so within a single place. So for example, maybe we're gonna change the API. Give us a title, give us a message, and give us a level. But I will set the level to a default of success. Okay, now we can tweak this. I can say test, and then on the about page, I will say, hey, and then let's try out an icon of, I don't know, info. All right, let's give it a shot. There we go, here's our information icon. Go to the other page, and now we have our success icon. Okay, so now you've learned two different very common approaches for basic code reuse, mixins and now composables. And in fact, we still have a good bit more to discuss. So let's keep digging into composables in the next episode.